Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that we may have just cut all the way through a two by four. So this just showed up today. This is the X-Tool 40 watt module. I'm gonna try to get this video out as soon as possible just so that we can all see what this thing is really made of. It wasn't long ago that we were all using five watt diode lasers and 40 watts is eight times the amount of power. But let's see if that has eight times as much punch. So let's start off by getting inside this box and seeing what we have. Here we have a nice looking manual, just like usual. It's not like an instruction pamphlet. This is like an actual book. Nice images, always well done, X-Tool. So here we have the 40 watt module, a beefier, stronger rail that we'll need to replace on the current machine. And also it looks like we will be replacing the motherboard. Toolkit, and there it is. It does have some weight to it. One pound, 15.6 ounces. 896 grams, a new power supply, tools, wire snippers, zip ties, some lube. So one thing that we'll have to do is actually convert a standard pro model, either the five watt, 10 watt, 20 watt, into the 40 watt capable machine. So it looks like we have a few parts that we need to replace. I don't think I'm gonna cover all of that in this video, but I may have a video in the description where you can follow a step-by-step -step to see what you have to do to put this thing together to get it ready. All right, I have included all the new upgrades on this machine, and these are the old pieces here, the old rail, the old control board, and some pieces for the limit switches. Let's get to what we're here for. We wanna see what this thing can cut. And now, I know a lot of you would be interested to see what this laser can do with the stock air assist, the, the little air pump. Um, but I'm gonna recommend that if you are really into cutting thick materials, you should probably check out my recommendation. I use an eight gallon California air, which is a very nice, quiet air compressor and I run that through my entire shop for everything. And that allows me to achieve 40 PSI here at the cutting nozzle. And from my test, I have seen really big improvements using that much air pressure. I would recommend checking the links that I have in the description below and putting together your own high pressure air assist kit. And I'll have all the fittings and everything that you need there to make it happen. They have moved the air assist line here up to the top of the laser module and it's integrated. I really like that, it looks really nice. I'm gonna put in, this is an on off valve so I can put that right through the top and it is a pressure fit. If I need to release it, I just push down and then you can lift out. And I'm gonna plug my supply line into the back side of that. We are pressurized. And you can even turn it to get just a little bit of air. So if I was doing like an engraving, you want a little bit of air coming out of your nozzle, keep your lens clean, but if you're cutting, full pressure. One more thing I need to set up is some fume extraction. Now X-Tool does also sell a enclosure with a fume extractor, uh, but here I have a fume extractor that I just use for different machines in my shop, and I'm just gonna have this kind of in the area, pulling the smoke out and through a window. One thing I'm noticing here is we do need to change the laser light offset. Fire the laser. There it goes. I need to measure the distance from that laser beam to the laser light offset. 21 millimeters. But in light burn, you'll just go to device settings and then you can see enable pointer offset. So we're gonna get rid of the negative 16 on the X and now it is a negative 21. And that offset it to where that laser pointer would be my starting point. Quarter inch birch. And this is just the cheap stuff that you can get at Home Depot. Okay, so that cut very easily and with that high pressure very cleanly. Quarter inch MDF. MDF can be pretty tough. I'll give it a try and see if we can get it. Seven will probably do it. Yep, 
straight through. Now let's go up to a thicker material. What do we got next? Okay, here I have some half inch red oak. Okay, so let's put this under the laser. It's getting smoky in here. Oh, I think we're almost through. Front side. Oh, there's the back side. Plywood is a pain in the butt to get through. I mean, the amount of glues and fragments and things in there, that it can be pushed out. Maybe we'll get a better idea. Three millimeters a second. That did it. I saw it drop down already. That's what I like to see. Boop, 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 boop. Three millimeters a second, half inch oak, red oak plywood. Cut through in one pass. All right, here we have some three quarter inch oak plywood. No, this thing can cut it. I've done it before with the 20 watt. And here is a sped up clip of when I was testing the 20 watt laser. This took three passes at one millimeter a second to cut all the way through the red oak. So let's see how the 40 watt compares. It appears as though it worked. Yep. See how the charring looks. It does have some pretty significant burning there. And it is coming off on my finger. So I do have some 3 quarter inch maple. I'm going to run at 3.5 millimeters a second, two passes. Ooh, that's beautiful when it drops down like that. Here is some solid pine, and I believe the thickness of this, 0.77 inches, 19.6 millimeters. Theory is solid wood will cut much easier than plywood because we don't have to compete with all the glue. Solid wood, you just have to compete with like the knots in the wood. And I think it can do it at five millimeters a second. Did it! I knew it would. Awesome. That's our winner right there. Probably not recommended, but here is some two inch thick XPS foam. 15 millimeters a second. Whoa, is that all the way through? Oh my God. All right. And again, I don't know the toxicity of burning foam. I don't recommend it. All right. Now for the real test. I'm sure everyone can recognize this. This is a two by four piece of material here. I believe these are made out of Douglas fir or sometimes they call it white wood. It's, it is a type of pine, but it's not like as dense as a real pine tree. I think they have increased the amount of travel on the z-axis which is really nice you can see how high i've got this thing now setting off the fire alarm let's just keep going i think we can get through Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that we may have just cut all the way through a two by four. <laughs> oh, what? How is that even possible? It's, it's doable. We did it, people. We did it. <laughs> oh, gosh. That laser beam is going to town, man. I wanna try again, but here's what I wanna do this time. And we're gonna get it as low as we can. Oh, 
I'm track of how many passes that was. I think that was six. We got a better cut quality this time. Oh yeah, we did. Yeah. Much less charring that time around. That's actually a usable piece of wood right there. Can you cut a two by four with a laser? Why, yes. Yes, you can. All right, I am going to use the 40 watt to slice through this two by four. I forgot to turn on the air. Can't believe I forgot to turn on the air. That would have been way faster. It's actually a pretty good cut. Especially for not having the air assist on the whole time. I thought it'd be way dirtier. Okay, since I ran that without the air assist, I am concerned that I could have made the limbs dirty. A little bit of clouding in there. Cotton swab with a little bit of alcohol on it. And I'm just gonna try to wipe that. I'll use the opposite side to dry it off. Oh yeah, much better. Yep, we are good to go. Oh, that's very easy to clean, especially with the uh, magnetic shroud that comes right off. Very nice, I like that. Okay, we're gonna run this test again. 40 watt diode laser versus two by four. I believe that was four or five passes, less than three minutes. And just look at that cut. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Front and back are clean too. Amazing. Inch and a half, 38 millimeters. Incredible. I feel like that's the mic drop right there. I don't know how to beat that. Okay, if my memory serves me correctly, the last or the thickest metal we could cut through with the 20 watt was 0 .007 inches thick or 0.17 millimeters. And that is the cut there. It was not very pretty, but we were able to get one out. We might have had to help it a little bit. Oh yeah. That was good and that was Three millimeters a second. Cut, check it out. Nice clean hole. Very nice edges, no slag on the back. Let's see how thick we can get on this thing. It's a little bit thicker. This is 0 0.012 or three millimeters. I may have to go back and count that, but I think that was three passes. And that's getting pretty thick. I mean, I would love to hear everyone's ideas on what you can make with thin metal like this. And some box jointed boxes would be pretty neat. You can make washers. I mean, that is strong. I am struggling to bend this. Do we have anything thicker? This 22 gauge steel. I have another idea. What if I drew a super tiny circle, put it on like 10 passes? So here's what I'm saying over here. So I've drawn this tiny circle. I've assigned a new color to it. It will do this first. It's gonna go really slow and it's gonna do three passes before give it a shot and see if that penetrates the metal. No, I think it spent enough time on the creation line. Let's do, let's do 10 passes. Oh, that little bitty circle there. I think I'm ready to throw in the towel. Let's take a look at it though. It does look like when I lowered it down, my lines got out of alignment. 
they're getting some discoloring on the back side. And I'm looking up close. I don't think we got any actual penetration. I have it set to 100 passes at 0.5 millimeters a second on that tiny little circle. Oh, we just pierced. We actually pierced. The light was coming through on the bottom side, and I think there is a tiny, tiny, tiny hole, but it's small. See that? Right there, I think, is a spot where it was coming through. Just can't get it to run slow enough. Oh well. Now, I have one more idea that I think will really get us through much thicker stills, and it's adding oxygen as an accelerant to the heat basically turning this into a tiny plasma table. So I have my oxygen, I can put my airline onto this right here. <laughs> I can release the oxygen to the nozzle. It's not very high pressured, I can tell you that. I may have to add two lines, maybe air and oxygen. But we're gonna hold off on this experiment until the next video because I wanna live long enough to make sure that I can get this video out to you. And if you are interested in seeing what oxygen on a diode laser can do, then check me out in the future and take a look at that video or check to see if it's already available now. Next tool, I'm impressed with your 40 watt diode laser. I think it's pretty impressive. And I think for those who are looking to cut and get through some really thick materials to create some really unique pieces, the 40 watt is a good fit for them. If cutting is not really something you're interested in, five watt, the 10 watt are all good choices, especially if you're starting out and you can always upgrade from there later. Having this amount of power on a diode laser like this is pretty incredible. The ease of use with a machine like this just really opens up my creativity to projects that are capable. I mean, I know I can achieve a lot more with this and it's neat because this seems a lot more accessible to people with smaller shops that don't have room for larger CO2 lasers. I really love lasers. I think they pair well with a lot of different creative mediums. Uh, especially vacuum forming. If you haven't seen this video right here, I wanna show you how I use a laser cutter and a vacuum former to create this really neat looking Atari sign. And if you wanna check that out, you can click that right over here. Yeah, right there. That's it. It's a pretty good one. I think you might like it. Go on, go on. As always, I wanna give a big thank you to my Patreon supporters and that is Dr. Larry Anderson and Woodland Iron.